Vice President Kamala Harris has hit a detour on her first official foreign trip. Air Force Two took off for Guatemala a short time ago, then turned around to return to Joint Base Andrews. We're told the change in plans is due to technical issues aboard the flight, which don't pose any major safety concerns. The vice president will take a different plane after they land. When she arrives at her destination, Vice President Harris will meet with Guatemala's President Alejandro Yamate. President Biden tapped Harris to lead efforts to address the root causes of migration to the U.S. from the so-called Northern Triangle. That's Guatemala, El Salvador and Honduras. The U.S. saw a record-setting spike in migrants from the region in March. Her two-day diplomatic visit to Guatemala and Mexico comes after weeks of virtual meetings with political community and business leaders. CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe is covering the vice president's trip from Guatemala. In an interview over the weekend, President Yamate told him that the U.S. could play a key role in seeking stronger punishments for human traffickers, also known as coyotes. In our Zoom meeting on May 7th, we made a proposal to the vice president. We asked her to introduce a bill in the United States Senate that would make human smuggling and acting as a coyote a federal crime. So you'd like coyotes to be prosecuted in the United States under federal law? Yes. That's correct. And we asked the U.S. to broaden our extradition treaty. So you would extradite them to the United States? Yes. Here the penalty for being a coyote is five or six years of prison. It's a joke. Did she give you any indication that she's open to that idea? Yes. So we'll see whether she follows through on that. I guess so. And Ed O'Keefe joins me now from Antigua, Guatemala. Ed, what's the, what is the Biden administration actually saying about that proposal that we just heard from President Yamate? Well, Lana, good to see you. Uh, Biden administration officials wouldn't actually confirm what the president told us, that there's going to be some kind of an announcement regarding Justice Department partnerships with Guatemalan prosecutors again to start dealing with transnational crime. But we should expect to hear a series of announcements on both uh, justice and economic issues to sort of under, uh, uh, underscore the partnership that is uh, now underway between the United States and Guatemala, especially to deal with this immigration crisis. She's stopping here first, uh, in part because, uh, as administration officials will privately tell us at least, this is the least bad option or the best worst option in a region with some pretty unstable governments. Hmm. And in your interview with President Yamate, he pointed to the Biden administration itself as being partially responsible for the uptick in migration. Explain to our viewers how he sees things. Well, uh, you know, for him, he, he, he sees this primarily as an economic issue. He said if you go to El Salvador and Honduras, it's more of a violence concern. From this country, uh, he says, it, you know, people are leaving mostly for economic reasons. And much of that has been driven in recent years uh, by climate change. Uh, the other issue we learned is that because of the pandemic, which, of course, is roiling the whole world, in this country, they put some pretty significant restrictions on internal movement. So people who might have maybe come from the more rural highlands of the country down to the coast to help process sugarcane or to go harvest the coffee, weren't able to make those trips this year, so they weren't able to make a living. Um, so in many cases, they may have sent a, a child or a husband or a sister uh, north into Mexico towards the United States in hopes of being able to earn a living. It's a, it's a vicious cycle, uh, but it's also, you know, we have to remember a small percentage of this country. It's about 16 and a half million people, a country the size of Ohio. Not everybody leaves. Uh, government here knows that, the United States knows that, but if they can find a way to convince most, if not all, of these people over time to not leave the country, it certainly would address the American immigration crisis as well. Vice President Harris laid out some priorities ahead of this trip, including having frank discussions about corruption and violence. How do you see these more difficult conversations playing out? Yeah, that is a, a sort of a sore point with uh, Guatemalan officials who say, look, she's, she's entitled to meet with and, and explore this issue however she wants, but they don't necessarily think, and this perhaps is no surprise, that corrupt governments is the reason why people are leaving. I think if you talk to people on the streets, they'd tell you otherwise. And it's not just this specific administration that's currently in charge, but just a culture uh, or a long history of governments that uh, face very little accountability and have at different times in the past uh, put up roadblocks to more independent accountability by either the judicial system 
or uh, independent investigations. And there's been some of that in this country in recent years. In our interview, what he said to me was, look, if you, if you want to look at corruption, you have to look across society, from the business sector to the nonprofit sector to judges and prosecutors, and yes, perhaps to politicians. But in his view, the most corrupt, of course, are drug traffickers. And that's why he wants to see stepped up U.S. prosecution of drug traffickers, wants his prosecutors to be able to partner with the United States to go after them in hopes of combating uh, a, a culture uh, and really uh, an informal industry that continues to dominate across the region. Mm. Well, U.S. and Central American leaders also agree that part of the reason for increased migration has to do with the environment. How is climate change factoring into these talks, Ed? It's incredible, Lana. Uh, we saw evidence of it, and, and we'll be sharing this in the coming days, of, of how drought really has affected uh, key portions of this country and, and really the poorest, most rural areas from which a lot of people have immigrated illegally to the United States through the years. Uh, and, it's, and it's affecting their ability to grow crops, and not crops necessarily to, to sell to American or international markets, uh, but frankly just crops to grow for their own family, for their own subsistence. If they're unable to grow their own rice and corn, or sorry, not rice, but if they're able to grow their own beans and corn, uh, then they have to go buy it. And if they have to spend money on food, which they otherwise would grow, they can't spend that money uh, on other necessities. And so uh, that's part of this vicious cycle that faces, again, this country's most poor, most desperate. Um, and it also, of course, uh, ravaged uh, other sections of Central America last year, two significant hurricanes. They're concerned about this year's hurricane season as well, potentially. Uh, so, you know, if you're looking for examples of those that are so-called climate refugees, that would, this is certainly one region of the world that has them. Uh, and it is another factor on top of all those others, drug violence, domestic violence, political unrest, economic uncertainty, throw climate change into the mix as well. And in many ways, it overlays all of them. Hmm. All right. Ed O'Keefe, thank you.